Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we take a look at how to make a simple color isolation effect in the timeline. I'll show you how to choose a particular color to adjust, how to make multiple color selections, and using masking to isolate the color selection. Quite often when building your edit, you'll want to perform a quick color correction to improve the look and feel of your shots. Instead of performing basic corrections that adjust the entire picture, we'll look at a particular color correction tool in Smoke 2013 that lets us select a particular color range and any adjustments made will only affect this chosen color selection. Here on the timeline we have the opening shot of the sequence. Let's say we want to enhance the red tile roofs in this shot. Let's start by adding a color corrector to the timeline. Pressing Control Tab activates the Timeline Effect Chooser. Activate the Color Corrector effect. With the standard color corrector, we are presented with a number of controls to help adjust the image. All the adjustments made here, however, affect the image as a whole. Over here on the left, we can access the Advanced Editor for the color corrector. This gives us even further controls to help manipulate the colors of the image. Along with adjusting the image as a whole, we can even be more specific here in the Advanced Editor. Here we have the ability to alter the image broken down into these three parts shadows, midtones, and highlights. Depending on what image range is chosen here on the left, you now have a separate set of controls here on the right that are dedicated to making corrections just in this chosen range. For example, with the shadow range selected, now when you adjust the controls here on the right, you are only affecting the image that falls within the darker or shadow areas. This gives you a fair bit of control over the image but we'll need to be even more precise if we're going to successfully enhance just the red rooftops in this image. Here in the bottom left corner, we can change the type of color corrector tool that gets used. CC, which stands for color corrector, is the tool we're using now. Press it once to change it to CW. This is the color warper tool. The huge benefit of the color warper tool is that we can select a precise color range and then make adjustments which only affect the image within the boundaries of the color selection we made. This tool effectively helps you create a mask so when any color corrections are made, it only occurs inside the boundaries of the mask. The Color Warper tool lets us choose three different color selections. To be able to perform a selective color correction, first we need to change the mode in which the Color Warper tool is working. The Work On menu by default is set to Master. This means when we make any adjustments, it will affect the entire image as a whole. Clicking on the menu, we can see four options the master control, and three levels of selection. Choose selection one. Your image will now turn black and white and the color selection controls become active over here on the right. There is a number of color selection presets here at the bottom that let you quickly define a color range, but we want to choose an exact color ourselves. In the define section here, click choose custom. The mouse pointer now changes to a target cursor. If required, Zoom into the screen using the Command plus shortcut. This will aid you in choosing the particular color. Now drag the cursor across the image to select the color you wish to isolate. By dragging across a wider area, you can make a selection that includes the various shades of the same color. Now we see our selected color in context with the black and white image. This color selection process has actually created a matte. Using the View menu, select Matte. We now see the black and white mat that was created based on the color selection choice we made. Looking at this mat, we can see that it is black where the red rooftops were. The mats created by the color selection process are actually reversed compared to the normal mode that masks operate. While viewing the mat, we can improve the color selection. This roof here we know to be red, so we can sample this area to make sure it is included in the color selection. Click the sample button located here at the far right side. Now drag the cursor across this mid-grey area. It should now turn to black. To help improve the color selection, let's briefly explore the color cube here. You'll see two different areas indicated. The grey area shows you the actual color that you sampled, whereas the dark diamond area is the softness, the areas of color immediately around your chosen color, which helps to create a smooth fall off between the selected and unselected areas. By clicking on points of the surrounding black diamond and dragging the point closer to the inner diamond, you basically remove the similar surrounding colors from the selection. Watch in the mat how the gray areas are removed as we drag the diamond edges inwards. 
The color selection process can be quite forgiving, so there's no need to try and get the matte as precise as possible, as this may leave you with hard edges on your color selection, which may become even more evident when making color changes later on. We also have the ability to add some blur to the matte to help soften the edges. By holding down Ctrl and Option, and dragging on either of the two X and Y blur values, we adjust both properties at the same time. Let's switch back to viewing our selection. If we made changes now using the color corrector controls here, nothing happens. Now why is that? At present, all we're doing is viewing our color selection. From the view menu, choose result. The image now switches back to normal. Any color correction changes we make now will only occur inside of our selective color range. Let's increase the saturation. Notice in our image now, the only area that is changing is the red rooftops. If we wanted to selectively change the colors of a second part of the same image, we need to change the work on menu to activate selection 2. Now the process is exactly as before. Pick your custom color from the screen and then make any modifications to help refine the color selection. Remember, viewing the matte of the color selection you just picked can really help you fine tune the color selection you will work on. Finally, the last step is switching the viewing mode back to result so that you can see all your changes appear. Sometimes you may get similar colors in your shot, but you don't want a particular color to be included in the color selection. For example, in this shot here, perhaps we wanted to change the color of the trams. Now the red of the trams is very similar to the color of the rooftops. So in trying to make a color selection affecting just the red of the trams, because the rooftops are a very similar color, they'll get included in the color selection as well. We can have the color correction just affect the trams by using masking on the timeline. Here on the top layer, we have the color corrected image, but beneath it, we have the original image. We can now apply a mask to this top layer to isolate just the trams. Press Control Tab to activate the effect chooser. Select Wipe. The wipe effect is actually a pre-configured animating mask. We don't need this, so hit the delete button in the lower right corner. To create our own mask, click the add button. The cursor is now in drawing mode, so plot the mask covering the area that includes the trams. If the area you wish to mask is moving, make sure you turn on auto key and animate the mask as required. Now, when we view the shot on our timeline, we've successfully changed the color of the red trams, but by using a mask, we make sure the color effect only occurs inside the intended region. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder about some of the key points covered in this episode. The Color Warper tool lets us choose and refine a particular color selection. To activate the color selection tools, switch the Work On menu from Master to Selection 1, 2 or 3. Choose Pick Custom to define your color selection, and viewing the mat can help you improve your color selection greatly. And finally, to see your color correction adjustments, make sure you set the viewing mode to Result. Remember, this is pre-release software. Any features or screens shown here in this episode may be implemented differently come the final release. Stay tuned for future episodes of Smoke Training that provide you with short, clear tutorials to get you up to speed on the basics fast.